to list off the other nine realms for you. And let me pull up an ancient map of Atlantis. See, I'm going to have somebody. Somebody said Loki. Yes. Loki, Thor, they are actually brothers. They are as guardians. They actually exist. Only difference is they're not white. They're not human beings and they're not Pleiadians. All right. They are descendants of a group of us that was here. Another, it's a lot of us that then came here. All right. They are ancient descendants of an ancient group of us. They are still gods at the core. All right. But just like the Nomos who took on the shape of dolphins and whales after their planet was destroyed in the Sirius star system, we, we, give, we, we promised to give them a home again. So they, we gave them the seas. And they took on the form of dolphins and whales. These are the nomos. This is why the government makes it illegal to communicate with dolphins. Definitely, if you got carbon in your skin, it's illegal for you to be in, in, in the ocean without, without, without the right paperwork in general. Yes, the whole Thor hammer is real. That whole story is real. Where are you going with that? Don't be just grabbing no charges because then we can't find them. We're, so, yes, that is real. Let me show you something. A map of Atlantis. Lele got one upstairs. Ask her to use hers, so Y'all got to share that one. Y'all ain't finna be running off with all the charges. All right, let me show you something. So, if you was to pull up on Google, and if you was to pull up on Google... All right. If you was to pull up on Google a map of Atlantis, this is what they would show you. This is what they would show you. All right. Or they would show you this. All right. I want you to take note of something. Scratch out Africa and all these other names around you, right? This landmass is how your planet, this is how your ram, this is how Atlantis looks still to this day. North America, Africa, South America, Asia, Europe. One landmass, like I told you, surrounded by water and an ice wall. Better yet, let's go right here. When you go to Atlantis, why do you think they show you this? Because this is the entire realm. Remember, our realm is blocked off by three ice walls. Pull up a map of Atlantis. See, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just decoding it for you. I'm cracking the light codes for you. If you pull up any map of Atlantis, they're gonna show you that shape. That would be us right there. What we all call today North America and all South America, all that in there. Then you got this ice ring with more of us. Then you have another one, right? So when you pull up a, a map of ancient Atlantis, they gonna show you these shapes, right? Metropol metrop metropolitan Atlantis, okay? This is what they're trying to show you. But this shape represents the whole entire realm. All right? And these walls represent Antarctica. Where the water is at, those are ice walls. You all have seen the ancient maps with the ice walls. I don't know if they're going to pull one up. But y'all have seen it. A lot of you all that are in here have seen it. But yes, I'm breaking down why it's like this. Why when you look up a map of Atlantis, it's going to show you that. Or it's going to show you this. Because this is how your landmass actually looks right now. You are not, you can get from here to Africa. Yeah, the ice, the ice wall is melting. You can get from here to Africa without flying over the water. You see how I pulled the map up? And they don't, they're not telling you like I'm telling you, but I'm I'm able to decode all this. This is what I'm here to do. You are living on one land mass. You do not need to hop, you don't have to cra travel across no water to get to Europe, Asia, Australia, or Africa. You can drive there, nigga. You hell, you can walk if you want to. But every angle that will let you get to that next part, they are blocking you from it. But that's why when you look up ancient, now that you know that you're on Atlantis, now you look up an Atlantean map, you're going to see it was just one landmass, like I've been telling you. Surrounded by water which were called seas at first, but it's now called the ocean because ocean was an, is a titan that is being kept at bay through two pyramids at the bottom of the Bermuda, all right? So, and all of this would be the ice walls that's around us, and that realm would be Atlantis, okay? That realm 
will be Atlantis. All right. Now, Google job is to lie to you. So any map, you're not going to find a, that organic map. I would have to have somebody draw it all based off what I'm telling you. But you got to read through the light codes. And if you can't read through the light codes, then this information is, is, it isn't for you. That's all that means. This is the University of Cosmic Intelligence. We're not responding to no trolls. We're not paying attention to nobody that can't keep up. That means you are not on our frequency. And that has nothing to do with us. Take it up with your creator. All right? And me being a divine teacher, I'm not finna be responding to nobody trolling. We, would you, when you go to class, did your teacher argue with niggas in the crowd? No, the teacher didn't do that. The teacher taught. And if your ass wanna sit in the back of class and think you know some shit, we'll think you know what you know. You feel me? We not doing no arguing though. All right, let's keep class rolling. So, we on this deep divine download right now. We focus right now. We talk about this dark matter energy. You must know where you are. All right? Now, I'm going to list off these nine realms. And I'll, like I say, I'm going deeper in my book. I can't go too deep on YouTube. But I'll go deeper in the book. It's called Welcome to Atlantis. Facts, I'm breaking down. It's called actually Welcome to Planet Kai. And I'm breaking down every single realm. But let's talk about the nine realms. Some of these names, when I say them, you, you didn't already heard them. But that's what they do. They ain't made up nothing. They take all our names and, 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 and pervert them. And, and contort them to be what they want it to be. Right? Then we finna get into they took the land. First, you gotta know that you're on Atlantis. So that's what we're talking about. And you're on planet Kai. Where is our planet located? We are located in the ninth universe. We are the last planet that was created in this ninth universe. This is where you are right now. Know where you are so you can know where you're going. All right? Now that you know you're on planet Kai located in the ninth universe, now it's time to break down these other realms that exist within your planet and that you knew nothing about. So we'll start with the first one. The first realm is Asgard or home of the Asir or the Asgardians. That's one realm. All right. The second realm is Alpha. Just like you Alpha and Delta or Alpha Draconians. It's a realm here called Alpha. And that realm is home of the light elves, not dark elves. The dark elves are not to be confused with the light elves. Let me tell you why. The dark elves come from Nern, and they are not actually dark. They are actually, they, they dress in dark pigmented suits, and they tall, lanky, pale white. All right? And they are workers of Satan. They are the ones that created the Sub-Zero technology. They are the ones that created winter. I'm not talking about the dark elves. They do not live on a realm here. They live on planet Nern. And they go back and forth through portals and time contraptions like CERN. This is why your government has like programs called CERN, C-E-R-N, which opens up wormholes back to planet Nern. Okay? Stay with me here. The third realm is Assyria, just like Assyrian or Assyrians. Yes, it's a realm here called Assyria. Oh, uh, let me tell you about the light elves. My bad, I almost went past the light elves. So the light elves are the opposite. The light elves are black like us, full of carbon. But they are called light elves because they do a lot of light work. All right? They work with a lot of the, the elemental beings that, that are on the planet. So this is why they are called light elves. All right? Not because they are strictly light. Because they are jet fucking black. The light, they showed you the light elves in the Smurfs. What you think the Smurfs was about? The light elves. All right? The, the Smurfs was all about the light elves. The way they carry themselves, the frequency, they very high, like high vibration, always in good spirits. Powerful beings, though. You know, think of Yoda. They like the Yodas. They know a lot of things about this planet that even some of us could never know because that was their role. But these are the light elves, okay? They live on a realm called Alpha, okay? Now, the third realm on here is Assyria, okay? Not to be confused with Assyrians, because they stole that from us. It's a realm here called Assyria, and this is where all the guardians of the Titans stay. So, remember, you have 72 Titans within you. You have another Titan that's stuck here named Ocean. You have another Titan named Atlas, who is stuck in lower dimensions, all right? This is what they was talking about in Greek mythology. Okay? But on the realm of Assyria, 
This is the, these are the guardians of the Titans. So when I say guardians, the Titans, when they were here, they made a lot of different beings. Think of pets. They made a lot of different pets to help protect them. And they showed you this in King Kong versus Godzilla. So on the realm of Assyria, which is also a realm here, all right, you got Godzilla beings that live on that realm. Godzilla is real. He's a he's a he's a he's a guardian of the Titans. He lives on the realm of Assyria. And it's not just one Godzilla, it's a lot of them. It's a whole species. Think of King Kong. It's a whole species of them. Gigantis. Why do you think when you go watch King Kong versus Godzilla, go watch it? They give you the whole scientific breakdown at the beginning. Pay attention. These beings exist. You also have the Kraken. All right. You might have you would have to go back to certain mythology to know about the Kraken. But they talk about that in the Bible, too. This huge being that's so big with all these and tentacles that comes up out of the ocean called the Kraken. All it's so many of them though. And in the movie, um, Godzilla, remember, he was fighting all of them. They was coming out of different places in the in the, in, the, in what they was calling the inner earth. Yep, and in Clash of the Titans, what Haiti say? Release the Kraken. These beings exist. They are on a different realm within the planet. Okay? So you have God, Godzilla type beings, the Kraken type beings, King Kong type beings, even um these uh when you go watch science, the scientific when you go watch the science channel, you go watch they talk about these giant these giant boa constrictors called Titanus boa. Basically, the realm of Assyria is filled with these huge powerful beings, and they were like the pets or the guardians of the Titans. No different than although you are a god, you would still get. A Rottweiler is a pet. You would still get a pit bull, right? People still do that. So that's what the realm of a is composed of. All right. Now, the fourth realm. This realm is literally called Snow White. Now that might sound crazy to you. You might even start laughing. Snow White. I got to be making shit up. No, it's just that the truth is being revealed to you, and you're finding out that a lot of the names that was placed in front of you are actually true. It's not made up. So the fourth realm is Snow White. This is the land of the dwarves. So the whole story of Snow White and the seven dwarves is about that realm. And they only put seven dwarves due to the fact that you have seven etheric bodies. Okay? You have seven etheric bodies in your sixth etheric body because your first etheric body connects you here to the physical. But your sixth one connects you directly to that realm. All right. So you have this realm, which is called Snow White, which would be the name to use it far as when you use an English terminology. Because remember, all these realms have different spiritual names, man. All right. But this realm of Snow White, which is the land of the dwarves, exists and the beings there exist in a cartoon format. Yes. So the whole cartoon format you see when you watch Snow White or you watch uh, 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 the Simpsons or you watch Peter Parker in the grip that is an actual realm so why do you think in movies like what was that movie called that came out like in the early 90s the movie with Jessica Rabbit in it oh uh, who framed Roger Rabbit those who are 30 and over know about who framed Roger Rabbit but if you are under 30 you need to go watch it notice in that movie you're going to see them go, they are supposed to be humans in the real world, but you're going to see the real world merge with the cartoon world. Why do you think the detective was fucking on Jessica Rabbit? He was in love with her. They were trying to make you aware of the realm of Snow White. It's a cartoonish realm. These our oppressors don't create shit. Remember that. So when you're seeing cartoons, when you're seeing this, you're seeing that. All of this should exist in different formats or some form of way. But I'm trying to give you uh, an idea for how the realm look. If you was to walk in, same thing they showed you in Alice in Wonderland. All right? That's what Alice in Wonderland was about. Her ass was in a regular world and then she went into Wonderland and she was in like a cartoon world. Okay? Wizard of Oz was about that. They didn't show her in a cartoon world, but they still showed her go from a reality world to a different type of realm. 
okay? Space Jam. Yes, Space Jam. They show you this shit because they have always had to show you the truth. They don't have to tell you it's the truth. All they have to do is simply place it in front of you. But this is the realm of Snow White. So you have the, it's the land of the dwarfs, but then you have all type of other beings to live there and they're in cartoon formation. All right. So this is the fourth realm. The fifth realm is Atlantis. That's us. So we in the middle. So the four realms I just listed are above us. Okay. All right. Asgard, the realm of Snow White, the realm of Al the Alpha realm, and the realm of the Assyria realm. All right. Now, below us, you got four more realms. So the first realm below us is Vegeta. Just like Vegeta of uh, 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 Dragon Ball Z. All right, you have a realm called Vegeta, and this is the land of plasma energy. You have plasma energy beings that are strictly made out of lightning bolts and electricity and lightning rods. This is why when you watch lightning come, where does lightning come from? Lightning comes out the ground. Somebody said Planet Vegeta. Yeah, if you watch Dragon Ball Z, you, you heard of Planet Vegeta. But that's an actual realm, though. And But it, it's nobody there but lightning beings, okay? So think of Super Saiyans and Goku. You got beings that don't take physical form. They just electricity and lightning and plasma. The Vegeta realm is the land of plasma energy. And it's directly below us. This is why, if you go look at lightning, go look at lightning. Anybody that know how lightning works, lightning don't come out the sky. Lightning don't come out the sky. Lightning is plasma energy. Smoothie. Anybody trying to talk shit? Trying to doubt my metaphysical intel here. Nigga, lightning comes out the ground. But they don't tell you why it comes out the ground. Better yet, they got your goofy ass thinking it come out the, out the fucking air. But you go look up lightning, which is plasma energy, and see where it come from. They don't tell you that much. They might tell you that much. Lightning is static energy. Plasma energy, it comes out the ground, shoots up into the sky. All right. Now, the seventh realm below the realm of Vegeta is the Nephilim realm. And we've all heard Nephilim before because they talk about them in the Bible. Oh, um, um, the watchers came and they saw the daughters of man and they went and laid with them and they created these savage beasts called the Nephilim. Lies. The watchers were gods. Black motherfuckers who couldn't control their dick. Okay? They were us, the guys that came down and started having sex with these white women after we reverse engineered them. The Watcher's job was to look over the Moors to make sure that they were reverse engineering the genetic effects of the human being species because when they first came here on our planet, they were in Neanderthal form. It was us who taught the human beings how to stand up right. Right? I've always said that I crack jokes, but nowadays, a lot of days, White women, y'all got a little ass nowadays. See what I'm saying? Because it's like little ass shots being taken, y'all. Y'all doing a lot of these, you know what I'm saying? Y'all getting a lot of these in, you know what I'm saying? Y'all getting a lot of squats in, you feel me? The one leg joints and everything. But originally, y'all had flat asses. That's because we literally had to take plank, boards of plank, and, and tie y'all to the motherfuckers. That's why y'all ass was so flat and sucked in. I'm just being honest. You feel me? Pre-ass shot era, y'all ain't have no gluteus maximus back there. We can use the scientific terminology. You're, glu you you're relaxing a gluteus maximus, okay? I'm just breaking the shit down for you, okay? You feel what I'm saying? We start fucking on y'all. Not me. Other gods, okay? We had gods here watching over y'all to make sure y'all get this, get this shit together, nigga. You can't be down here, nigga. On all fours and hee hawing and sleeping with your horses and all that old crazy shit. We ain't on that. So we started enlightening you. All right? We assigned a group of us, the more specifically, to handle that. Because we got other shit to do. You see what I'm saying? And then, to make sure the Morse was doing their job, we had watchers to watch over them. And these niggas got extra freaky. So they started having sex with these white women. Right? And then they started pillow talking. And having sex and having babies. And then they try, to, they try to tell you in the Bible that the babies that came out were the Nephilim. Those are lies. The Nephilim is a Nephilim is an actual ram on the planet. And it used to belong to the fire giants. Okay, so the fire giants are these fire beings. And I'm saying giant because they're so huge. But they are basically fire beings. Alright? They are fire beings. And they have a direct connection to the element of fire. However... 
when our planet was hijacked, the, 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 the ram of the Nephilim, they went to war too. And they lost that war like we lost our war here on Atlantis. So now the Nephilim ram is ran by the frost giants. All right. And they showed you them in Thor as well. Go watch the first Thor. When Thor went to that realm and he fighting all the niggas, them ice giants and shit, they exist. That's our actual realm. That's the realm of the Nephilim. All right. It used to belong to the fire beings, but they lost that war. When the dark elves came to Atlantis and brought all that technology here, all that cold weather shit, the realm that was the only other realm that was affected by our war was the realm of the Nephilim. Okay. So it's imperative that we know who the, my back itching. It's imperative that we know who the real Nephilim is. The Nephilim is not. A, a group of beings who got here from 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 God's fucking human beings. That ain't how, that ain't who the Nephilim. The Nephilim is an actual realm, and it used to belong to fire to the fire giants who are one with us. They are elemental beings as well, but they lost their war like we lost our war here on Atlantis. And now that realm is ran by these frost giants, and they showed you them in Thor. Okay, now. The la the seventh the eighth realm because I'm, I'm running down the list the eighth realm just like you got Delta Airlines you got a realm called Delta the Delta realm this is the true where Delta get its name from like the Delta the, the Delta the Airlines they get that shit from the, it's an actual realm called Delta the Delta realm and in the Delta realm that is the home of the veneer now if you Google veneer because I was trying to Google it they don't tell you the truth about the veneer the veneer are a group of advanced in the interterrestrial beings. They have shape. They, their heads are shaped like cones, and they are an ad, cone head advanced race of mystical beings. They are interterrestrials. So think about the movie Conehead. The movie Conehead was all about these the veneer. The veneer lives on the Delta realm, and they are on the seventh realm in the planet. All right, and the veneer are of an advanced group of cone head beings they are they are advanced in all the ancient mystical arts but they are called the veneer and they are black though so in the movie cone heads let me pull it up let me pull it up let me pull it up they showed you the veneer all right and when you look up the veneer in Norse mythology they try to say the veneer are beings that deal with fertility no you're gonna have for you're gonna be fertile regardless that has nothing to do with a with a group of beings you know, I know they mad at me. I know they mad at the motherfucker right now. Why don't they watch this show? This nigga tell the motherfuckers. He breaking the whole goddamn planet down. But yeah, though. <laughs> Hold on. Uh... Now let me show y'all something. If you Google veneer, this is what they're going to show you to, to, to keep you off balance. When you Google the veneer, look who pop up. White people with elf helmets. You see what I'm saying? So they let you know they exist, but once again, here they go lying about how they look. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? They don't look shit like that. Let me show you how they look. This is exactly how they look. It was a movie that came out a long time ago called The Cone Heads. Cone Heads right here. That was The Cone Heads. This is how the veneer really look. They heads are shaped just like this because they use that they use the tip of their head as beacon points like pyramids to do all type of mystical arts. All right. But they are black, not white. So the veneer are interterrestrials. Now, keep in mind, listen to what I'm saying to you. Notice how I'm saying the veneer. They are not extraterrestrials. They are interterrestrials because they are inside planet. What makes a species an extraterrestrial species is when it comes from outside the, the of our planet. That's why they are called extra, like the light, like the lichens, like the lyrans, like um the nomos, the nagas, us. We would all be extraterrestrial races, Pleiadians, extraterrestrial. Once we made this planet, the veneer came here and they took home within that realm. So that seventh realm belongs to them. All right, they look just like the conehead people. Only difference is. They are black, all right? And they are mystics, very advanced, mystical, in, interterrestrial beings, all right? Yeah, yeah, Conehead's old school. That's what I'm saying. The only reason I'm in tune with all this is I, I just tap into self. I just, just 
This is what the ancestors put me here to do. This is why these people want to harm me and hurt me now. All right, everything I'm telling you is facts. And then they'll put they'll put this shit in a cartoon, or you'll hear them like they did with the Bermuda Triangle video. They'll come out two months later and be saying all the same shit I'm saying. We discovered a new group of fuck out of here, nigga. Every time Rashad said niggas think I'm crazy, until some white people say it was soup song, the niggas be oh, over here. Then they want to tag me in that shit. Like they don't tag me and shit. Well, my ancestors sent me here to do this. I ain't got time to be on, on here lying with you. I could be spending time with my wife and my kids right now. I ain't come over here to play a lot. Feel me? All right. Now, the ninth realm of Atlantis is called Hades. All right? That's the very last realm. And it's the home of the fallen gods and the lost souls. All right? So, Hades is where a lot of your, your most powerful principalities reside at. A lot of your fallen gods that are on the planet, they are in Hades. Satan himself, Zeus himself, resides because he ain't in the sixth universe no more. I told people who've been watching me, Zeus came back what we would call maybe three years ago for this war right now. He's residing right at the bottom in Hades. And that's also where lost souls go. So that's why the elites like to get people to sell their soul. Like when you when you sell your soul, you ain't transcending. So they either take your soul and put it in artificial intelligence or they will lock you up in Hades on the realm of Hades until they can you reuse your soul again or to, or until they want to use it at a later date because you signed it away. This shit real, y'all. Shit very deep. Ain't no hell, but it's definitely a Hades. You know, it ain't full of fire or none of that shit. It ain't nothing but lost souls and very powerful fallen gods. These are the nine realms of planet Kai. All right. So now that we know the nine realms, let's dive into how they took the land. I want to start first, y'all. My bad. I had to take it off the charge. So. The dark matter energy is rising. All is being revealed. But for us to rise, we have to have full intel of our planet and who and what we are and how everything works. All right? So, a lot of these cities and towns were built over slave grave sites. New York, Chicago, L.A., Dayton, Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio. Miami, the Carolina, I don't give a fuck what state you name, what country you name, we were there and they slaughtered us in war and then built their cities over us. I don't think y'all understand that. Let me let that sit in y'all soul if I even move forward. Let me let that sit in y'all soul if we even move forward. All of your major cities, states, towns, municipalities were built. It's bad enough that they killed us. Hold on. You know that they killed and conquered us. But did you know that they built over the dead bodies? Literally. All the parking lots. All the buildings. Even where you stay right now. There isn't a place you can go. They literally took us and threw us in one location. Like after they defeated us. You know, our souls kept going. Our souls and spirits kept going and came back or did whatever we was going to do. But as far as the physical body, after they killed us, they, they made these huge grave sites for us and they would dump all our bodies right there. And that, that area might have been the size of Charlotte, North Carolina. So what would they do? They Then they turned around and built and made Charlotte, North Carolina over that whole grave site. They have done this with every city. This is what makes it a city. This one makes it a town because they are still trying to harness the energy of your ancestors. Somebody said this is getting spooky. Yeah, it get real deep. You have to understand why their magic was working. You have to understand why you fear them. They have harnessed and reversed the energy of your ancestors who feared them at the moment when they died. Not all your ancestors, but some of them did die scared. This is why we have to rise. This is why we can't. It is in game. You have not a clue because there's so much shit they didn't just, they left out and didn't even tell us because they knew how you would react to it. How would you feel if you knew every Walmart was built over your, over, over dead bodies? Every con housing complex, every project, every, every, every city, literally every state. Remember, the, the planet is way bigger than they're telling you. So these little areas that they call cities, towns, and states were the grave sites. Hear me clearly. Your, your modern day cities, towns, and states were the actual grave site locations of our ancestors. 
And then they built their cities purposely over that as a sacrifice ritual to harness the energy. Somebody said the planet is a big corpse. Who is that? Adrian Barker. You got damn right it is. That's what I'm trying to say. It's one big graveyard. You living on, you, you walking on top of your ancestors. All right. So I'm going to pull up a couple stories today. You might have heard of them. You might have it. I'm not going to run through every city, but I'm going to just run through a few so you can know how real this shit is. Okay. Let's start with Lake, with Lake Lanier in Georgia. Lake Lanier. Hold on. In 1912, the white population drove the black population out of... Hold on. First off, I don't want to plagiarize. Let me see. So I'm going to get credit. This video was posted by Intrigue Minds. So shout out to shout out to Intrigue Minds. That's who did this original video. I'm using it as a reference point right now for my lecture. I'm not still in his video. I do not know him. I do not own this video. I'm only using it as a reference point. So YouTube, please don't mute the video because we got souls and spirits that need to see this video later, please. God damn, y'all be so hot in the ass. So yeah, Intrigue Minds posted this video, but it goes along with my lecture. It's about eight minutes, y'all. We finna watch it though. Listen to this. Listen to him. It's a human being talking, but he ain't lying so we can listen. This is one of the places, and they did many places like this. But check it out, though. Listen. Intrigue Minds made this video once again. Hold on. This event was triggered by crimes against two white women, allegedly. Now, what I want y'all to notice, too. Notice how most of these stories where they took our land and killed us and stuff like that, it always started with some white woman lying saying she was raped. They use the same tactics all through history. Like they trying to do me down here in Georgia. Somebody lying saying some shit happened to them. They have a reason to come kill your ass and, and harm you. Pay attention to that point. Let's keep going though. Oscarville was a small town in the county of Forsyth in the state of Georgia. In 1912, the white population drove the black population out of Oscarville with threats and violence. This event was triggered by crimes against two white women, allegedly at the hands of black men. Homes and churches were destroyed, and an estimated 1,100 people were displaced. This was not the first time that Oscarville had been the site of racial violence. In the 1830s, the white population forcibly removed Cherokee farmers from their pro- Let me pause right there. You heard what he said? You heard what he said? That wasn't the first time they displaced us. Now, remember, who was the Cherokee? Us. So if your eyes is woke to the fact that there's, there's no such thing as Indians, we are the Indians. We are the descendants of those native tribes. Keep that in your mind. Now, let's keep going. And force the Cherokees away from Oscarville forever. Welcome to Intrigued Mind, where today we explore Oscarville, the city drowned by Lake Lanier. Lake Lanier is the site of multiple mysterious deaths and disappearances that have plagued this man-made lake for as long as it has been in existence. Many people believe that the lake is haunted because it was constructed on top of a town. That town was called Oscarville. Located in Forsyth County, it still exists today, but it is submerged beneath as much as 152 feet of water, though the remnants of Oscarville were revealed during droughts between 2000 and 2009. So, what happened to the residents of that town? Who were they? And why did they leave? And what other mysteries does this submerged city's tragic past lay claim to? Keep watching to learn all about the secrets of Oscarville, the town that was flooded by Lake Lanier. See you later, not happy. Hold on, let me hit mute. Alright. So he finna go into he gonna talk about Lake Lanier. And this whole fucking this a whole town, Oscarville. But you wouldn't know that today because it's a lake over it. Come on, man. Here they go with the double commercials. Come on, YouTube. Yeah, I'll make a nigga sit through an ad. Let's go. County, which lies in the northern part of the state of Georgia. Today, this county is characterized by a predominantly white population. Yet, this was not always the case. In 1912, each and every black resident was forcibly relocated. 
an estimated 1,100 people, comprising 10% of Oscarville's population, were removed from their homes and sent into exile. But what events precipitated this racial cleansing? In September of that year, before the white people drove out their black neighbors, a young woman was found in the nearby woods. She was beaten, bloodied, and unconscious. The woman was 18-year-old Sleety Mae Crow. The girl later died of her injuries, one week shy of her 19th birthday. It was believed that she had been struck from behind and dragged into the woods while walking home from her aunt's house. Her assailant raped her before striking her in the head with a rock at least three times, crushing her skull. A black man named Rob Edwards, whose only crime was to be in the area at the time of the attack, was quickly seized. Edwards was unlawfully hung in the town square, with many of the white community present. His body was strung up on a telephone pole, and white onlookers fired bullets into his lifeless body. Two right. more people would be ex So let's not ju just let's not jump past that. Okay, so a white woman is walking. Same story like Black Wall Street. Same story with Rosewood, Florida. Same story. They used the same shit. They trying to do me like that right now in Georgia. You know, if it's a black or white woman, they use a woman. If something happened to a woman or some shit like that to come after your ass. That's the point. Now, this nigga Rob Edwards, he ain't did shit. Because he, but because they needed a reason to attack Oscarsville. They they hang him and shoot him. Hang, listen, and it's in Georgia, where I'm at right now. So ain't no, I'm not shocked about them trying to hang me right now. They been down here hanging niggas. They killed so many of us in Georgia and built so many towns over us. That's why I gotta stand strong. Get there, like man, y'all got me fucked up. Like I don't know what y'all did to my people down here. I bet I don't be the example, nigga. Facts, nigga. This for them. This for Oscarville. This for all them too. But just pay attention. Let's stay focused. Facts for this still unsolved murder 16 year old edward knox whom the girl allegedly accused on her deathbed kill him 17 year old oscar daniel the two boys were put on trial found guilty and handed down a sentence of death by hanging earlier that same week okay so in this picture they just hung both of them was teenagers they already killed one black god right then they turn around and kill two more all right let's keep going the two boys were put on trial found guilty and handed down a sentence of death by hanging earlier that same week another white woman was allegedly assaulted by two black men ellen grish the wife of a well-respected farmer accused two black men tony howell and isaiah perkle of attempting to rape her before they were startled and scared away by her mother these men were imprisoned awaiting trial a black preacher by the name of grant ellen was alleged to have speculated at a community barbecue that Grish may have given consent to sexual relations with Howell and Perkle. Word of this speculation reached the ears of the white members of the community, who were enraged at the suggestion. An angry mob captured Grant Ellen and horsewhipped him until he was nearly dead. The local sheriff managed to intervene just in time to drag the preacher to the safety of the courthouse. Regardless of whether these black men were guilty of the crimes they were accused of or not, it acted as a flame to a powder keg. The night of Sleety May Crow's funeral, Enraged white men gathered at the town's crossroads, armed with guns and sticks of dynamite. They descended on the black population with fury, spurred on by sensational news reports and the support of Crow's parents, who went on record to say that they wished to be rid of the town's black people, whom they refer to as the fiends of hell. Okay. In the coming months, these- So now, keep in mind, every, all these white people down in Oscarville, right? They didn't like these black people because they were successful in their little town they had. Even though they had already pushed them to that point where they took all this land from us, they still didn't like that. All right, they called them the fiends of hell. Uh, now they used two excuses to go attack them. Now pay attention. White vigilantes, known collectively as the Night Riders, drove the black community out of town. It is estimated that in the early months of the racial cleansing, that 98% of Oscarville's black community fled in fear, never to return. Many of the cabins of Oscarville's black population were scattered along the banks of the Chattahoochee River on the outskirts of town. The Knight Riders would go to each and every white home to call up the adult men of the family to join the group. It is worth remembering that it had only been 50 years earlier that a white man was legally allowed to pursue escaped slaves in the days before the Civil War and the Emancipation Proclamation. Therefore, when the knock on the door came after sundown to join the Knight Riders posse, it may not have seemed a foreign concept to these men at all. It took a few months for these so-called Knight Riders to drive the black people out of Oscarville and from nearby towns such as Cumming. Those members of the black community who served in the wealthy houses of the upper-class white families in the neighboring town of Cumming were afforded some protection. But the poor sharecroppers, landowners, and cotton pickers, who were the most vulnerable, were the first to flee the town. The Knight Riders' main modus operandi was to throw stones through windows, 
to fire gunshots through front doors and to shout out get to the terrified inhabitants within okay so before we keep going we just can't jump past that who else used them tactics the kkk who else used them tactics the police today they like to come deep come with their guns hell the u.s marshals do that too they came to my house in the middle of the night come to your house in the middle of the night guns drawn trying to scare you to take you to jail so they can hang you kill you kill you slowly see that's all i see they took the land this atlantis though but i don't think we understand these tactics are the same motherfucking tactics they've been using on our people from day motherfucking one they call them marshals today in the police and the fbi and the cia it don't matter whether whether you're right or wrong it could be tax evasion they come they come just like they did right there they ass was innocent they didn't give a fuck nigga they went and got their ass in front of their families and then look at the tactics they use to drive all the black people out they throwing stones through their windows at night shooting through their doors you don't think little kids got shot nigga hell yeah nigga imagine you sitting in the crib with your with your wife and your family nigga just shooting through the doors they took the land but i don't think you understand how they took the land so i'm finish furniture was burned pets and livestock were shot and messages were left behind giving inhabitants 24 hours to leave one white woman ruth jordan who was just a girl at the time of the racial cleansing recounted one night when she accompanied her father who was friendly with his black neighbors to check on their safety they found their neighbor's cabin empty the furniture shot to pieces when her father called out their neighbors the cooks emerged from the woods where they had spent the night hiding in terror by mid-october it was reported in the news that many black homes had been torched and razed to the ground, along with five churches where black people worshipped. The exiled literally had no place to return to. By burning their churches, the Night Riders struck at the very heart of the spiritual and social fabric of Oscarville's black community. Stop. Let's stop. Let's pause it. Look at their tactics. And you know, them are the racist human beings is vibrating low. I don't fuck with them. Somebody say, you say, yeah, I don't like racist ass human beings is vibrating low. I have no problem with the human beings vibrating high. Cause guess what? Even then in that time you had human beings that was vibrating high and they wasn't with that shit. It's always been duality all through history, nigga. How you think niggas was getting away doing the underground railroad? How you think niggas was getting hit? It ain't never just been all human beings, but it's been a majority of they ass, but not all. So I can't take it out on all. Just like all gods ain't roll with us, nigga. It's hella stories in history where black people, that motherfucking, went back and told the masses some shit and fucked up the whole revolt. We finna revolt. Yo bitch ass ran back and told some shit, fucked the whole revolt up. Go read about Gabriel Prosser. I know my history, do you know yours, though? This is what I do. So my rage is righteous rage. I'll I just paused it for a reason, though, to all the Christians out there. I've been telling motherfuckers, nigga, boy, they didn't give a fuck if you was in church, boy, they would come in that bitch and burn your ass in front of your kids. This is exactly why we ain't finna show no motherfucking mercy to y'all ass right now, nigga. Facts. Boy, just like they would have tried to hurt me for no reason. Y'all know my case. I ain't got one. They made some shit up because I'm doing this, waking motherfuckers up, nigga. But I had the ancestors not moved me, moved us, we wouldn't have known shit, nigga. You think they wouldn't have cared about it? You think the marshals and the police don't care about shit? They'd shoot the fuck out of me in front of my kids, nigga, and my wife, nigga. No different than back in the day. Oh, you want to be that outspoken nigga, huh? We're going to bring you in front of the whole... And they know y'all watching me too. We're going to make an example out of Rashad Jamal. No, the fuck y'all ain't. What y'all going to do is start a whole motherfucking war around this bitch, nigga. 
I know who I am. I know this is our land. And I know why y'all came in me. Like, I know why y'all come in my people. I know why they pour black people carbonated beans over and shoot y'all and arrest y'all and fuck with y'all. Why they drug the food. Why they fluoride the water. Nigga, read history. You ain't got to go back that far. You ain't got to know none of the cosmic shit I'm telling you. Just go basic history, nigga. Nigga, they said they burnt down five churches. Why? Because they knew this would strike at the spiritual source of the community. That let you know right there, nigga, Jesus ain't real, nigga. That let you know right there, nigga, what church was all about. To make your ass passive, nigga. Before church, we was fucking shit up around this bitch. Then they came with that church shit. So worship your slave masters. It's okay because Jesus suffered so you can suffer like him. He died for your sins so you should suffer like he did and you'll get your heaven after you leave. Nigga, fuck the heaven after we leave, nigga. We want heaven right here, right now. Fuck, we got to leave for to get some, some peace around this bitch, nigga. They burnt churches. They did more than that. Don't forget who's telling the story here. You can't never expect no human being to tell you the truth about you. Don't forget who's telling the story here. He's still like, he's still, he's still laying it on light, nigga. Y'all better go read Uncle Tom's Cabin. And then you wonder why I'll be like that with them. Why I'll be on that energy with the races and the elites. Why I'm on that energy with 12, nigga? Smoking dead cops. You goddamn right, nigga. Give a fuck what color you is, nigga. You a op if you behind that badge, nigga. Because I know what that badge really mean. I know who the laws was made for. Me and my motherfucking people. But niggas walking around thinking they free. Now imagine that. Nigga, we was going to church and everything, niggas. And y'all, niggas wasn't even safe in the church. And then you wonder why when Hurricane Harvey hit Joel Osteen, this thing to get to me. Y'all try to talk about ISIS wisdom, Kali, even Pharaoh, me, or anybody in, the, in what y'all call the conscious community. That if they do make any type of dollars. But you ain't said shit about Joel Osteen though. Because the last time I checked, ain't nobody made more money off black people than Joel Osteen and Jesus. And when Joel Osteen made billions off of our black people. Nigga, when Hurricane Harvey hit, he wouldn't even open the doors. People forget about that. I don't. I take it personal. That's why I go out my way to remind motherfuckers, remember who you are. Nigga, remember, remember who they is. Nigga, they ain't never changed. Only motherfucker changes us. Nigga, they the ops. Niggas been up there with they ass generation after generation, nigga. So why the fuck this generation want to be so soft, nigga? Now it gets to this generation, niggas want to blame each other. Oh, you know, black people, they own worst enemy. I snap your motherfucking neck with my bare hands, nigga. I ain't trying to hear nothing from none of you house Negroes to be. Oh, why he 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 talks with all he full of rage. You goddamn right I am, nigga. Look what they did to my people and still doing. And niggas want to be nice. Ain't no other way to feel about this shit, nigga. Ain't no other way to feel, nigga. I'm killing kids, they kids and all, nigga. Anything vibrating low, nigga, ain't nobody safe, nigga. Was our kids safe? Did they give a damn about our women, nigga? Our kids, no, nigga. So what the fuck I'm showing mercy for? Then you bitch-ass niggas want to get on my life. He just said, he, you got that right, I'm going to kill the kids, nigga. Every motherfucking kid in the house, if I come up on your motherfucking house, and you on that low vibration, nigga. It's war, nigga. 
I don't give a fuck, nigga. You send the marshals, nigga. You make a case, nigga. It's, it's war with me. I ain't honoring shit, nigga. Yeah, I will leave this motherfucking avatar, nigga, before I be a slave around this bitch, nigga. Y'all can have that shit, nigga. Because I know after this world, I am forever free, nigga. Finna be nice. Did you hear what he just told your ass, nigga? They burnt the churches down too, nigga. Once again, you know they took the land. But is it sinking in your soul how they took our land? You goofy ass house Negroes, me. He cap. What's cap about riding for your people, nigga? You's a bitch, nigga. And your mama that raised you. You can sit on the internet and jump in these real life things. Nigga, we talking real shit, nigga. We, we, nigga, we lost billions of us, nigga. They didn't just take our land, nigga. They took our dignity, our assets, nigga, our culture, nigga. We don't even love ourselves no more around this bitch. But you got the audacity to get in the lab and say some shit, Cap, nigga. You are Uncle Tom. That's what you is. We not in here playing. And I bet you wouldn't say that to my face. If I'm giving this lecture in real life time and you said that, boy, I would blow your motherfucking brains out your head. Chop your body up. Take my time, nigga. Piece by piece. I'm not playing when it comes to my people, nigga. I know what they did to us, nigga. You cannot give a fuck because you's a bitch. You don't stand for nothing, nigga. If that shit don't move your soul, nigga, you don't stand for nothing. Fuck is you breathing for? You don't think it was no kids in the church? You don't think motherfuckers in there? They, yeah, niggas, was, niggas ran to the church for safety. After they took their homes, they ran to the church. The same church they, they slave masters gave them. Thinking Jesus was going to save them. Ran in the church and still got killed. Still got raped. Still got burnt alive in the church, nigga. Boy, they used to take us, nigga. They used to hang us at high noon, nigga. It's pictures, nigga. Of a thousand white racists, nigga. I hang your bitch ass at high noon, nigga. All in the name of they Jesus. When the KKK came, nigga, they had a cross, nigga. A burning cross, nigga. Burnt your ass to the cross. All in the name of they Jesus. And y'all bitch ass want to keep working for them, nigga. Want to keep kissing they ass, nigga. You a disgrace to our whole motherfucking race. Like I told this police officer to live next bitch ass house, nigga. I told his ass the same shit, nigga. Give a fuck if you got a badge, nigga. You black, nigga. You place the badge before your people? Well, you gonna die with that motherfucker, nigga. Fuck it, man. Straight up. Niggas don't know history. Niggas don't stand for nothing but they self. Niggas selfish. That's why it don't affect you. They took our land, took everything from us. Play it back. You heard what he said, nigga. You heard exactly what he said. You ain't hearing wrong. And it get worse than that. Along with five churches where black people worshipped, the exiled literally had no place to return to. By burning their churches, the Night Riders struck at the very heart of the spiritual and social fabric of Oscarville's black community. By late October, violent means were no longer necessary. All it took was for the Night Riders to leave a tied-up bundle of sticks on the cabin's front porch in the morning, and the family who dwelled there would be gone by sundown. Such was the depth of their terror. The white farmers who remained in Oscarville went on to prosper after the racial cleansing of 1912. Look, look, look. Hold on. You already said. Hold on. 
the white farmers who stayed in Oscarsville, they went on to prosper. Of course they did. You just eradicated the whole motherfucking species that was living there, nigga. Then look at them, sitting there smiling like they ain't did nothing. Like they ain't did nothing. Now, where you think they kids at today? They still here. They got descendants too, nigga. Shit ain't no motherfucking game. It's in game, nigga. That's the only game it is, nigga. It's in game, nigga. Now get caught in the crosshairs if you want to playing out here, nigga. We ain't playing. After the racial cleansing of 1912. In fact, they were so successful that Oscarville was one of the few farming communities to survive both the Great Depression and the Bull Weevil attack. Check them out. Boy, they took so much shit from with that. We're just talking about Oscarville now. They took so much shit. You heard what they just said? Boy, even when Great Depression hit, them niggas still was getting it in down there, nigga, down here in Georgia. Nigga, they was good off. That's how. Now, they, but that's just Oscarville. Boy, that's every city, state, town, municipality around this bitch. Boy, got that same story. They took the land. Our land. Our planet. Lord, our frequency. We Atlanteans. Anunnaki gods, goddesses, royalty. We ain't honoring shit no more from these bitches. Y'all tripping. That had plagued the area since 1915. However, the fact that Oscarville primarily comprised farming land made it a target for developers who wanted to create a water supply for the fast-growing Atlanta metro. All but five residents were asked to sell their land to the government for this project. In 1947, a deal was struck between the Chamber of Commerce and the Industrial Bureau for the construction of the Buford Dam, which took four years to complete. And by 1959, Lake Lanier was filled for the first time. By this time, the farming town that was Oscarville had completely disappeared, only living on via a handful of old maps, archived newspaper articles, and local oral history. About 1,100 people lost their livelihoods and their homes during the 1912 racial cleansing of Oscarville. A few families sold their properties for dirt cheap for Look the first them. time. Look at that. Now, if this is a fucking lake now, you would never have known it was a town full of us living there. You would have never known that if you don't know that. Just look at it. Now imagine how many more lakes you go past every day. Just imagine how many more lakes you go past every day. We better get your bitch ass off my live talking about stop chewing. Take your bitch ass to a whole nother live segment. Fuck you mean stop chewing. Get your goofy ass out of here, smoothie. Now imagine if chew what the fuck I want to chew around this bitch. Nigga, I'm hungry. What you talking about, nigga? Fuck who come out? Get what you said, nah. Say some more shit, nah. I'm keep chewing. Fuck what you talking about? Stop being a house nigga. How about that? Stop being a, a coward. How about that? Fuck you talking about? Stop being a coward. Stop moving like a whole bitch out here, nigga. You ain't got no nuts. Hear me? Fuck is wrong with you. Now imagine y'all, if you ain't know, imagine how many more lakes you ride past and you thinking they natural. That's the point I'm trying to make. Imagine how many more lakes they not telling you about. Did you think lakes? All these oceans. Now, if that's under the lake, what the fuck you think is under the oceans? The rivers. What you think I'm trying to point to? Do you say your whole life a lot? Nigga, we ain't have no rivers and all that shit, nigga. We had seas. Every place you see a lake and shit. That's all that shit, man, man. Even the five great lakes, boy. Them was, they put, you know how many bodies they put in Lake Michigan? Them was all the, the, the whole Illinois Confederacy, boy. Dead bodies make up the five great lakes. Come on, man. You don't know how deep this shit run, nigga. Come on, man. All these oceans, man. Who you think at the bottom of them oceans, man? They ain't gonna tell you that. 
They'll never tell you that. They'll never tell you that. I'm using this one example. Now, people in Georgia knew that. But that still should amaze the fuck out of you. Like, Joe, look at it. Look how they did it. You would never know. Look at it. It's all beautiful and shit. You're like, oh, that's beautiful. So if this is beautiful, how many more tourist attractions they showing you that's really not tourist attractions? I ain't telling you to do nothing. But use some insight right now. Look at how beautiful the backdrop is. Now, how many more places you go on this planet with beautiful lakes and meadows and mountain views? If you only knew they took the land from us, man, and how they took it from us, man. They ain't just do that down no Oscarville, Georgia, nigga. Everywhere, nigga. Every city, every state, every great lake, nigga. Oceans, nigga. That's why it's in game now. Oh, man, we on to the next real quick, man. Real quick, man. Then they want to tell you shit like this. You know, they, they run across this shit all day, y'all. So, we claim that free business profile on Google. Yeah, now we can accept booking. Hold on, they do this a lot, y'all. So, check this story out. Radar finds more than 120 graves buried beneath Tampa apartments. I'm just clicking on this shit. They not surprised, nigga. This shit is, they, this is every apartment, nigga. When I say we everywhere, we everywhere. I say prayers all the time. Listen to this. God, that whatever it is, that he will reveal it. And he's revealing it. Look at this. Apartment complex in Tampa. Look at that. Not just in areas that we have scanned, but we believe that is the case under the actual building that the, the Tampa, let's read it. The Tampa Housing Authority directed private archaeologists to investigate whether the graves remain on this land. Look how they neighborhood look. Hold on, y'all. Look how the neighborhood look. You would never think this was nothing but graveyards and bodies that they built over. From the results on this map, GPR testing returned the reflections of buried rectangular objects that are the... All these graves. Boy, it's more than that. But you would never think that. This is an apartment complex in Tampa. And they still light saucing you. They're still light saucing you. They still light saucing it. Come on, man, I made this live for a reason. This shit should, should get your soul ready for this end game where we going with this revolution right now, nigga. Come on, man. That's just them showing that apartment. Boy, the apartment complex you live in is all buried over, built over bodies. It was, it was trillions of us. Boy, we went to war with their ass. Boy, a lot of us lost our avatar, man. Our ancestors died fighting their ass. That's why they hide the grave sites. Do you get it now? To make sure you never fight against their ass again. That should, that should touch your soul right now, man. We're going we gonna to do a one-minute break, man. Let, let that marinate on niggas' souls, man. I don't think y'all letting that shit marinate. Niggas can't be letting it marinate, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. You should be sitting back right now like, damn, hold on. I mean, I knew we were slaves and shit, but hold on. You telling me, nigga, that even my house right now, our house, yes, built over us. Because we was everywhere. We were everywhere.